Okay, we are live. Good morning. There are three of us with you this morning. Stuart, Ashley, and Michael. And we're delighted to be in your presence and have you in ours. Thank God for this gift of technology. And please offer your comments and your prayer requests and whatever else to stay in close touch with us. We do the order of service for noonday, and it begins on page 103 in the Book of Common Prayer. You can only see half of me, so I'll scoot over a little bit. Oh, God, make speed to save us. Oh, Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The psalm today is 121 on the next page. We'll read responsibly and whole, responsibly and whole verse. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You will not let your foot be moved. And he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. So that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord, Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this, from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Father, Father and to the Son, and to the, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Thanks be to God. Um, so this morning's gospel reading was uh, Mary and Martha, which is one of my favorite gospel stories because I think we all have moments in time where we are Mary or Martha. <laughs> um, and so our meditation today um, is... Uh, is about being distracted by many things. So, uh, today we read the story of Jesus teaching another marginalized person. A woman now sits at his feet in the posture of a disciple in a culture where only men were allowed to, to, to disciple themselves to learned rabbis. Again, Jesus violates society's conventions, this time to permit a woman to adopt the disciple's role. But what was Jesus' lesson for Mary? What did he actually say to Mary in today's story? We don't know. The gospel writers usually set up a lesson from Jesus by first establishing a dramatic situation in which Jesus instructs one of the twelve, or a questioner in the crowd, or the scribes and Pharisees. We as readers can, then can listen in. But today's story provides the setting without ever telling us Jesus' words to Mary. Though his lesson to her lasted long enough for her sister Martha to grow so impatient that she expressed her irritation that Mary was not helping with hosting duties. We as readers of this story might even feel a bit resentful that this important lesson is never shared with us. Like Martha, we never hear what Jesus said to Mary. But there is still a lesson for us, and for Martha too. Perhaps Jesus' brief aside to Martha is the real lesson in the story. I'll repeat Jesus' words to Martha in just a moment, but if you can in some way identify with Martha, hardworking and earnest Martha, that lesson might also have meaning for you. Anybody hardworking in this group? I bet so. Uh, <laughs> who welcomes others, who takes care of others, who wants things done right. But for every one of Martha's fine traits, there is a potential shadow, shadow side. As much as we can admire Martha's caregiving and zeal and helpfulness, we, aware, we are aware those qualities can lead to problems taken too far, used too proudly or unreflectively, Martha's helpfulness can turn demanding and impatient and critical, controlling and selfish, insensitive and intractable. 
perhaps you recognize some of these tendencies in yourself. We all need more patience, more peace, more generosity of spirit. Now Jesus said to Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. What are the things that worry you? What are the things that distract you from the truly important things in your life? What is the one thing you need? What is the one thing we all need? Thank you. We continue in the middle of page 106. Lord have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. I'll start with a prayer for the poor, the hungry, and the neglected. Today, Ashley and I worked at our parish's food pantry, and we ended up feeding over 300 people. So it triggers all kinds of thoughts and needs. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected and hungry persons whom it would be so easy for us to forget. The homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, O oh Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Almighty God, who at noonday called your servant Paul to be an apostle to the Gentiles, we pray you to illumine the world with the radiance of your glory, that all nations may come and worship you, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I and I'll prayer. ask Michael to... Yeah. Pardon? Yes. I have the prayer list pulled up. Go for it. I, I was just going to say, I'll, oh, let, <laughs> I'll let you pull the prayers. All right. To the St. Mark's prayer list. We pray for the Episcopal Church, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, the presiding bishop, Larry, our bishop, our clergy, Billy, Joanna, Michael, Patricia, Susan, and Stuart, our staff and vestry. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Derry and Rappo in the Church of Ireland. In the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for St. Francis House and its ministries, Camp Mitchell and its ministries. We pray for the Commission on Liturgy and Music and for the Commission on Ministry. We pray for peace. We pray for an end to racism, terrorism, oppression, poverty, pollution, and persecution. We pray for our staff, especially this week, Linda King, Discipleship and Evangelism Coordinator, and for all our parish ministries at St. Mark's, especially this week, the St. Mark's COVID Task Force, for the safety of first responders, healthcare workers, and those in the military, including Megan, Sam, Breen, Marshall, and Garrett, for families expecting children, Marley and Taylor Gamble, and Thanksgiving for uh, the birth of the Herod's child. For those commended to our prayers, Cole, Austin, Rachel, Betsy, Craig, Mary Sue, Suzanne, Paul, Janet, Adam, Jan, Shelley, Margaret, Blake, Jim, Amanda, John, Christine, Bob, Monica, Robin, Jerry, Jerry, Gary, Gloria, Carol, 
Susan, Jeannie, Rusty, Blake, Seal, Vincent, Buddy, Lynn, Faulkner, Peyton, Trudy, Judy, Avery, Frankie, Robert and Joanna, the Webbers, Alexis, Pierce, Sage, Scott, Chanel, and Tamara. We pray for birthday, those celebrating birthdays today and those celebrating wedding anniversaries. And we pray for all those who have died in the repose of the soul of Kay Jacob and Merle Wagner. For Melinda. In our Facebook prayers, we pray for Bonnie and Steve, Bill and Jesse. We pray for all those who are without shelter from this extreme heat. We pray for baby Geo and baby Kendall. For Zach as he struggles with his recovery from surgery. For Lee's dad, Jack Jackson. We pray for Ben as they finish and his classmate next semester. We pray for Trudy. We pray for healing for Amber, Joanna, Olivia, and Robert. How about your own prayers this time? For Lisa and her family, in thanksgiving for Gary's very successful surgery, for Margaret and for Adam, for Shane, Barbara, Joe, and Jim, for John, Tim, and Ann, for Ben and Catherine as they travel, and for Millie, for Gary Rose, For Tate and for Molly, who are grieving. And for baby Wally. You want to conclude it? And Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Bye, Goodbye. Guys. This is a first for Priya. <laughs> Dynamic trio. Yeah.